The United Nations says insufficient progress is being made by governments in tackling climate change. A new report by the UN says the path of global emissions is not following a downward trend that's needed to hit climate targets this decade. It says current commitments will increase emissions by about 9% compared with 2010 levels. The UN says this is a marginal improvement since last year when emissions were due to increase 11% uh, uh, by 2030. And by 2030, emissions are projected to be 2% below 2019 levels, suggesting that peaking of global emissions will occur within this decade. Well, our science and technology editor Tom Clark's here. So, Tom, firstly, I was, good news or bad news first? Let's do the, the, the bad news first and, and the extent to which this is still far too high and, and far too worrying. Absolutely. So th these figures, by the way, come from an analysis of these things called nationally determined contributions. And these are the pledges that countries are going to go to the climate summit, which is a couple of weeks away now mm -hmm. in Dubai, to commit to meet. And what they show is they are woefully insufficient. So emissions peaking this year, you could see that if you were eternally optimistic as a good thing, emissions peaking by 2030. But 2% reduction is where we'll be by 2030, according to these pledges, what we need to get to 1.5 degrees, that temperature which we want to avoid, is a 43 to 45% cut, way more. I mean, a, a, a huge margin uh, of difference there in terms of what is, we need to, to get to to avoid 1.5 degrees. So I was going to say, is there any good news in the peak? <laughs> clearly, clearly you've, you've already answered that question. Where does the problem arise from here? And where, where are perhaps the, the lack of sufficient pace of change uh, arising from? Effectively, uh, quite a few countries, including the UK, for example, have got an ambitious 2050 target. Oh, we'll get there. We'll get there by 2050. We'll zero emissions by then to reach 1.5 degrees, which, bear in mind, just for those who might have forgotten, and it's easy to, there's a lot of numbers, the 1.5 degrees is by the end of this century. That's the target we're getting to. 2050, it's, it's a way off, we can do it. But what we, need, we know we're going to have to do is make cuts to get there, otherwise that cliff is far too steep. And progress towards this interim target, 2030, just isn't being made. People are pushing things back. Look at our own government in recent months has delayed some of its commitments, and all that's doing is going to make it more expensive and harder to get to. Have those changes from the UK government affected the, the numbers in this global UN report, or not really, at they, the margin? They would have basically would have made it less likely to meet our 2030 target, and that does go into these sorts of analyses. You know, the targets are fine. Have you got the policies in place to deliver on them? And that is what's woefully missing. And what we're seeing every time we have one of these summits, lots of enthusiasm, lots of pledges, but I think it's reasonable to say at this point a real frustration that the, the, the actual follow-through mm -hmm. isn't there. Uh, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, it's all very. That was all very doom and gloom, and I don't want to. Yeah, it, it, it looks awfully depressing in terms of the progress being made through this UN process. The commitment's not there, but things are happening. An important thing. So, um, electric vehicles, for example, despite there not being a huge amount of support and commitment by certain countries, they are very rapidly gaining a toehold globally, sort of under their own steam, if you will, um, and. Look at what they're mainly driven in Asia, to be honest, by policies in China, but you look at uh, renewable electricity generation as well. China, for example, this year alone deployed enough renewable power to power the entire of the UK. So in terms of some of the pace that we're seeing in some sectors, there is some reason to hope we might see acceleration here despite the current commitments that have been made. Electric cars making an impact by their own steam, which is oh, that was... interesting thing to unpack. <laughs> Thank do, you for picking up on just, just finally, because you mentioned two areas of that, in terms of where we're lacking the progress globally, yeah. is, is it more on transport and how transport's fueled or on electricity generation and how that's fueled? It's all of the above. It's everything. Yeah. I mean, we are, it's literally everything. The, but the easier ones to fix, probably, are transport. You know, vehicles, we have the solutions. They're there. Much harder things. How do you, do you, do you decarbonise heavy industry? Cement. How do you make steel mm -hmm. and aluminium and uh, concrete without using fossil fuels? Those are the really big challenges. Um, and decarbonising energy should be straightforward. We have the alternatives. There are very powerful vested interests and some very powerful countries with lots and lots of fossil fuel resources mm -hmm. who have traditionally and, as far as we know, will continue to oppose radical changes at these UN-type conferences. Tom Clark, thanks so much.